the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 104 to Samuel 7 to 10. The three conditions for the temple construction. God promised David that he would keep David's house forever. And David, who was moved by this, offered a prayer confessing himself as God's servant. First point. David, who became king, opened the new age of the Jerusalem temple, which lasted a thousand years. After learning away from Saul for ten years and then being king over the tribe of Judah for seven years and six months, David finally became king over all Israel. He moved to Jerusalem and now sat in his new palace. But in his heart, he felt bad that God's ark was placed in a tent when he was surrounded by cedar logs and stone mason. And so David thought of the unthinkable, something that no one for the past 500 years thought of. This was to build a home for the ark, and so began the thousand-year temple. David first told this to the prophet Nathan. Nathan told David that God was pleased with this, but that God had three conditions. The first was that God would give the design. As God had given the design to Moses 500 years ago, God was to give the design to David. The second was that David was only to prepare. The reason David was not to make the temple himself was because he had caused too much bloodshed during his life. The third was that the temple was to be built during the days of Solomon. God granted permission, but on these conditions. God also gave David the promise that the monarchy would continue in the house of David. When we think about it, Saul tried so hard to pass on his position to Jonathan. So the fact that God promised this to David was indeed astonishing. Second point, David who was a war hero did not build an empire. Even during his teens, David was a natural fighter. Historically, all those who were natural fighters dreamed of and then implemented in making an empire. This involved enslaving other nations and taking over other territories. But the surprising thing was that although David had the skills and manpower to make an empire, he did not. This was because he truly believed in a kingdom of priests. Third point, David emphasized righteousness and justice in his politics. God had told through Samuel the negatives of having a monarchy. And this was reflected painfully in Saul's monarchy. But David did not follow in the footsteps of Saul, and instead did the opposite to show a model for a kingdom of priests. David required righteousness and justice in his politics. In order to do so, David established a firm central organization doing what was right for all his people. He appointed Joab over the army, Jehoshaphat as the official, Zadok and Aviatha as priests, and Sariah as the secretary. Benaiah was in charge of the Kerisites and Perisites and David's sons were ministers. 
David made into reality what God had been envisioning since the day of Abraham. The reason David was able to do this was because he had the hopes of a kingdom of priests in his heart. Fourth point, when David became king, he embraced the tribe of Benjamin during his entire rule. Excluding Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, Saul's household became almost entirely perished. When David found out that Mephibosheth was alive, he took him into his palace in order to keep his covenant with Jonathan. David, furthermore, kept the covenant he made with Thor. David had Mephibosheth eat with him in the palace. David, moreover, even embraced Shimei, son of Gera, who cursed David. When Abishai said he would kill Shimei, David said, What does this have to do with you, you sons of Jeruiah? What right do you have to interfere? Should anyone be put to death in Israel today? Don't I know that today I am king over Israel? So the king said to Shimei, You shall not die. And the king promised him an oath. And David said that Shimei would not die. As such, David practiced justice and righteousness and tried to do the opposite to Saul. He embraced the tribe of Benjamin and tried to bring the people together. Fifth point. The Ammonites were unable to win as they did not know history and they did not know of David's abilities. Despite losing every time, the Ammonites had the habit of attacking Israel. The first time they attacked was during the era of judges. The second was after Saul became king. The third was after David had become king. The Ammonites thought that David sent envoys to explore the city and then overthrew it, when in fact David was trying to honor the death of their king. They completely misunderstood David and offended his men. And so, David commanded Joab to prepare for battle. The Aram army also got involved, but thankfully, the Israel army was able to win. After this, the Aram people made a treaty with Israel and never supported Ammon ever again. This Tong Doc app is amazing. When I first met Dr. Zhou, we were speaking together at a conference. And when I saw the Tong Bible and the way he had placed this one story together, the Bible, one story, I ordered cases of this Bible. Now to see this app, the Tong Doc app, ready for you to use in your daily Bibles reading, this is amazing because so many people tell me I don't understand the Bible. And he has placed it in an order as so that it is one story. And then day after day, takes you through the Bible in a way that God's Word will touch your heart so deeply that it changes your beliefs. It helps you to rise up and be the amazing person He created you to be. Welcome to the Tong Dog app.